our Savior and King, shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Pressing more closely to Him who is leading When we are tempted to turn from the way Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us Happy, how happy our praises each day How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Stepping in the light Stepping in the light, how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Walking in footsteps of gentle forbearance, footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love. Looking to Him for the grace freely promised, happy, how happy our journey above. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, upward, still upward, we'll follow our guide. When we shall see him, the king in his beauty, happy, how happy our place at his side. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, let it pass of light. Is over me like the sweet gentle rain. I love to sing your praise, Lord. It brings a victory. No matter what I face, through all of my days, I love to sing your praise. There's a place inside of my heart where a song of thanksgiving starts because of your goodness and the joy that you give gonna let my song fill the air yes i'll sing it everywhere lord my praise will crescendo every day that i live i love to sing your praise lord i love the sound of your name it fills me with peace, washes over me like the sweet gentle rain. I love to sing your praise, Lord. It brings a victory. No matter what I face, through all of my days, I love to sing your praise. Lord, I love to see your skies when you paint a glorious sunrise. I love the dew in the morning and hearing some birds sing. But there is nothing sweeter to me than to join in harmony with my brothers and sisters. Sing and praise to the King. I love to sing your praise, Lord. I love the sound of your name. It fills me with peace, washes over me like the sweet gentle rain. I love to sing your praise, Lord. It brings a victory. No matter what I face, through all of my days, I love to sing your praise. I love to sing your praise, Lord. I love the sound of your name. It fills me with peace, washes over me like the sweet gentle rain. I love to sing your praise, Lord. It brings a victory. No matter what I face, through all of my days, I love to sing your praise. 
No matter what I face, through all of my days, I love to sing your praise. Amazing love. It's a key of C. Once my life was full of sorrow And I had no place to go Oh, but then I heard of Jesus How His love would take control Ever since that blessed day My soul has been at ease I'm so glad I let him in. Praise God, I've been redeemed. Amazing love, love that drew salvation's plan. Amazing love, love that brought him down to man. Amazing love. Love he gave right from the start And it reaches to the bottom of my heart It was love that caused my heart to thrill The day he took my hand And he said that he'd go with me through my trials and my life span That's when I told the Savior I'll do the best I can And now His love I cling to As I journey through this land Amazing love Love that drew salvation's plan Amazing love, love that brought him down to man. Amazing love, love he gave right from the start. And it reaches to the bottom of my heart. Praise Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask our, our children to come, and they're going to do our pledges, and they're going to sing. We're going to be here today at 5 o'clock to practice music with these children. I'm not a music teacher, so I'm involving Jonathan to help with our, our children's ministry, our youth ministry. I can get the resources, <laughs> but I'm going to need him, his help to help us. Amen. Risen and coming again for true liberty and eternal life for all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. I'm 
just a nobody Try to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Let me go down, down, down in history As another blood ball Faith a member of the family And if they all forget my name Well, that's fine with me I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus So let me go down, down, down in history Go down in history As another blood ball Faith a member of the family That's all I ever want to be If they all forget my name Well, that's fine with me I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm just nobody Try to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Okay, we have one more song for a very special lady in the audience whose birthday is today, Miss Kylie Crump. So if y'all will sing happy birthday to Kylie. Sing Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. If y'all will go over to the instruments, we're going to do Amazing Grace. Do you want to play little bells for me today? Go over there in that box and get them for me. Okay. Jonathan's going to play some background with them this morning. Come on over here. Can you be seen? Get between Caden. Stand between Caden and Stan. Shall possess with me. 
a, has a nice drum roll, Katie. Regina Mitchell. Pastor David Crump. Oh Lord, as I wonder on earth here below my burden so heavy wherever I go I meet with disaster that burden my soul and then I remember I have but one goal I'm bound for a city of beauty so rare to live with the Savior eternally there. No more disappointment will burden my soul through troubles and trials. I have but one goal I see others living In manner so fine The worldly possession Much greater than mine I'm tempted to envy The treasures they hold Remember, I have but one goal. I'm bound for a city of beauty so rare to live with the Savior eternally there. No more disappointment will burden my soul. 
through troubles and trials, I have but one goal. And when I see Jesus save me from sin, and He bids me enter and welcomes me in, I'll praise Him forever. As his glory unfold, and I'll be so glad I had but one goal. I'm bound for a city of beauty so rare. Have but one goal. We have a Bible. Let's turn to Philippians chapter number three. I want to read verses 13 through 16 and maybe share a few other scriptures as well uh, in the course of this message this morning. And trust the Lord to give us something that'll be a blessing, be a help uh, to each of us. And want to. Just think on what lies ahead this morning. I believe God has some good things for us in the future. Amen. Heaven for sure, right? <laughs> Amen. All right, verse 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule and let us mind the same thing. May we pray. Father, we do thank you. We love you. We appreciate your presence. Uh, in our hearts and our lives. Thank you for these that have chosen to be here in the good house of the Lord this morning. Pray that you'll bless the message to our hearts. You'll use it for your glory and for your honor. We'll be careful to praise you and to thank you and to love you uh, for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. What lies ahead? Amen. A lot of good things lies lies ahead for uh, each of us and um, Paul speaks in this uh, particular chapter of Philippians he talks about uh, the past and the present uh, and the future uh, of his life and he speaks uh, back in verse 7 maybe I think it is that he uh, speaks about things and throughout the uh, verses we find that he uh, says something about things four times and then another time he mentions it and it seems to sum up uh, what he's saying when he speaks about earthly things and I just thought about uh, the number four uh, being the number of the earth and so when he said earthly things I thought well maybe he's summing up these uh, four things prior to that but anyway, five times altogether, he speaks about uh, things. He read, he said, forgetting uh, the things that are behind and reaching forth uh, to those things that are before us. And so he's reaching forth to uh, the promises of God, the plan of God, and the will of God uh, for his life. And so he's speaking of these things as a part uh, of his past life because he had uh, things in his life that were great. He had things that he was certainly not proud of uh, when he uh, persecuted the uh, people of God. Uh, but there were things that uh, he could uh, boast in as, as far uh, as he being, uh, uh, you know, uh, a Hebrew. He was uh, uh, had much uh, for going forward. 
before him that he could have uh, boasted about. Uh, but he said, I count all of those things that are behind me uh, as nothing uh, because he knew that Christ was far greater. And then he speaks about the present uh, in that he is... Uh, uh, desiring some things. He is reaching forth. He is pressing on. And this uh, word uh, press means that uh, he was having this great desire. Uh, he was having this uh, dedication about himself and this determination uh, to, uh, to reach on out and to press on uh, for uh, the Lord. Another meaning, I think, of this uh, pressing was that he would so live uh, to uh, to reach those things. In other words, not to allow anything uh, to interfere uh, with him reaching uh, the goal or reaching that uh, particular prize that the Lord would have. And this uh, prize uh, would be uh, the fullness of salvation. All of the benefits that would come with salvation. We'll not receive them all here, but but we'll receive them all there. Amen. And so he was uh, pressing uh, uh, with such great desire, such uh, determination and, and dedication. And I uh, saw this morning before I left uh, the house, uh, Brandy gave me a plaque for pastor appreciation. Had some of those words on. I said, that me? <laughs> had those, uh, some of those words, uh, hard work and uh, determination, I believe, and commitment and things like that that it said on the plaque and I can't uh, remember it all but uh, anyway I thought about awaiting him and not for him only but he said unto all who love his appearing uh, and we ought to be in love with Jesus so much uh, today that we're uh, looking out uh, to the future uh, just as Paul did, uh, that he's pressing toward the mark. This is the future uh, uh, state within his mind, uh, that he's uh, reaching and pressing toward this mark uh, for the prize. This mark uh, has to do with that goal. And that's why I wanted to sing that song, I have but one goal. And this is our goal. This is the mark. This is the point that we're looking to. Uh, that's the target. Uh, and we're pressing for uh, the prize and this I said is the fullness of salvation. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 2 through 6 uh, uh, talks about some natural uh, blessings for the people of God and it says and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 5, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Uh, just want to say just a word right, right there. This has to do with uh, what uh, uh, the widow woman did there that Elijah came to and, and told her to make for him a cake first and then for her and her son and anytime you go to the meal barrel there will be meal in it and so this basket in the store here uh, relates to exactly uh, what she would experience uh, that the uh, cruise of oil would never fail there would always be just enough oil amen there will always be just enough meal uh, to make that cake of bread uh, and so this this is what God is uh, telling uh, the people of Israel through Moses that their basket uh, will be blessed, that their store will be blessed. They'll never go to the cupboard uh, and find it bare. Hallelujah. There'll always be something there uh, for you and I. And every time we come uh, to the Lord's table, uh, there'll always be something uh, there awaiting on us. Uh, and it's all because of His good grace. Uh, if if you remember the story of Mephibosheth when uh, David came there to, to do kindness for someone of the house of Saul uh, there was Mephibosheth uh, who was dropped at a young age maybe a, a child 
and he became crippled and the grace of God brought him to the table of the king amen he didn't have to sit in the background somewhere amen but I tell you grace does a lot for us grace will cover all of our sin it will cover our problems that we have in this life and the song says I may not have much here but look what's waiting me over there amen McPhibosheth didn't have much there uh, down in Lodabar uh, but look what he had at the king's table and he got to eat there the rest of his days uh, he got to come to the king's table from that uh, from that day on one day after a while uh, we're going to sit down at the king's table amen and you and I may not have much on this side but just look what's waiting us uh, on the other side of Jordan uh, thank God God has great things in store uh, just ahead uh, for us and not just when we get there uh, but he will bless us here according uh, to this passage verse number 6 uh, uh, says blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in and blessed shalt thou be uh, when thou goest out and so these were uh, blessings that would be natural or material blessings uh, uh, for the children of Israel uh, but God has these blessings for us plus eternity to come uh, thank God we have uh, 30 and 60 and 100 fold in this life and eternal life uh, in the life to come. Look what life A couple things I like left over. Bow ties pretty good left over. Chicken casserole is pretty good left over. I don't like meatloaf left over too good. No, I don't like that too good at all. But anyway, God has some things in store for us while we're passing through this life. Amen. The joy of, of the church fellowship, the joy of our family, uh, the joy of the things that God has provided for us uh, in this life. Amen. Jonathan got some joy yesterday, went up there and sat on the side of the pond fishing. Amen. Now, that's joy to him. That'd be boring to me. That's not what I'm looking for, Lord. <laughs> Amen. I'm looking to eat them. Not what he called to. <laughs> Amen. God has great things in store uh, for us uh, in the future. But here Paul is speaking about this mark for the prize of the high calling. And so I just wanted to mention those benefits that the children of Israel got in comparison to uh, our benefits in this life, but in the life to come. I mean, he's talking about the fullness of our salvation, all of the benefits of our salvation. He used to sing a song uh, uh, here years ago. My brother and some had a quartet, and they'd sing, keep walking, uh, just keep on walking. You'll get to heaven someday. Get in the right way. Just keep walking walking in the light of the Lord and we'll get there one day after a while I like what uh, Peter says in first Peter 1 and uh, three and four, I think he's, think it is, where he said, He hath begotten us with a lively hope unto, unto, unto some things. Uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now look what he's going to give to us in verse four, to an inheritance that is incorruptible that is undefiled that it fades not away but it's reserved in heaven for you and for me this uh, this inheritance is incorruptible it'll never it'll never die it'll never see corruption in any sense of the word it's undefiled that means it's untouched by human hands that means it's holy that means it's a pure uh, a two didn't it about amen I like that lot of cola when it first came out of 16 ounces it seemed like it was about 40 it was so big amen we used to them little old 10 ounce drinks and uh, maybe a six and a half ounce in a coke if you had that that didn't last long but you got a lot of cola you could drink and drink and drink on that lot of cola I imagine that, that may have been the first 16 ounce drink that came out. I'm not sure, but it was a lot of cola. 
Amen. Just old people like Glenn and me know about that probably in, in this room today, but this is an, an inheritance that's not going to fade. It's not going to give out. And guess what he said next? That it's reserved in heaven. I mean, God's keeping it just for me. You're, he's keeping yours for you, but he's keeping mine for me. Amen. I'm not going to uh, build a house and let somebody else live in it. If I build it, I'm going to live in it. Thank God. I didn't build that in heaven, but God built it for me, and he means for me to occupy it. Praise God. He means for you and I to live in that place that he has uh, for us, and he's keeping it. He's guarding it uh, for us, and it'll, it'll never it'll never be torn down termites won't be able to uh, mar its foundation uh, nothing will be able to, uh, to uh, destroy that which God uh, has has for us and he's keeping it for us and guess what the, uh, the next uh, word would be that we are kept uh, maybe in the next verse we are kept uh, by the power of God through faith uh, under Praise God that heaven awaits each and every one of us that are believers uh, this morning. And so we're just looking at a few things uh, uh, that lies ahead uh, for every believer in Jesus Christ. God's love that will never fail is always just ahead of us. It will never be gone from us. It will never be out of our sight. We'll always know that God loves us. He has loved us with an everlasting love, and it's with his loving kindness that he drew us unto himself. It's all because of God's love that we're Christians this morning, that we're saved, that we're redeemed. And you sing it earlier amazing love uh, that came down from above I mean God God wrote this uh, uh, amen before the foundation of the world and sent down his uh, darling son into this life uh, uh, to, to redeem mankind to uh, everyone that would believe on him uh, amen it's not our works but it's his works uh, it's not what you and I can do but it's what he's already done for us uh, and what a wonderful change has been wrought in your life and my life when Jesus came in. He changed things. Amen. He gave you a new heart. He gave you a new nature. He gave you a new desire for him and to love him. All because he loved us. And he said, Behold, what manner of love has been bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. What manner of love is this? How great a love is this? No one else would love you like Jesus did. People will stand off and mark your sins, uh, and they'll mark my iniquities and my sins, uh, but Jesus won't. Uh, he'll wipe them clean, uh, and he'll cleanse us and give us a new start. Uh, he'll give us a new beginning. He'll give us a new life. And so you can thank God that there is a love uh, that God has that man does not have. I don't care how Christian he is, how holy he is, he'll condemn you to the day he dies. That's what, that's what happens. Any time that you falter, you fail, there's those, uh, well, I don't want to call them that. Brother Hallwood, he's bolder than I was. He called them Pentecostal witches. <laughs> Amen. Point a finger at you and you know and scorn you to death and condemn you uh, to death and everything else and, and that's that's man's nature that's the human nature uh, that people have but God don't have that kind of nature He says where are your accusers Amen Lord I have none neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more Amen God is a loving God he's a God of forgiveness a God of, of uh, such compassion uh, toward us and so we can rest assured that uh, he's loved us with an everlasting love and that love is always going to be ahead of us it'll never leave us we'll always be able to see it all we've got to do is look at the cross and see 
see it. Look to the Garden of Gethsemane and see it. Look to the, uh, to the time that he saved you and he brought you from where you were to where you are today. And we'll always be able uh, to behold God's amazing love that's out and ahead of us. Uh, it goes before us to lead us and to guide us uh, in the right way. But not only that, there is his amazing grace. Uh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound uh, that saved the wretch like me. Once was lost, uh, but guess what? And now I'm found. Uh, I was once blind, uh, but now I see. Uh, and that grace will always be there. When you need more grace, uh, more grace will be given. Uh, thank God we, are, we, are, uh, we have uh, uh, been justified. Uh, by his grace uh, there are different uh, 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 phrases within the scripture concerning our justification that we're justified by grace uh, has to do with what God the Father intended in the beginning. We're justified by faith. Uh, that's on our part. That's what we do. We have faith. Uh, and so we're justified by faith, by believing that Jesus arose on the third day uh, to justify you and I this morning, to make us righteous and to put us back uh, where a uh, man was before he ever fell. Amen. And we're justified uh, uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ uh, and that's the work of Christ on Calvary's cross uh, that we believe that he shed his blood for us and by that we're justified by his blood uh, and we're also justified by the resurrection uh, the work of the Holy Spirit uh, and he raised us up and if he raised up Jesus from the dead if this same spirit dwells in you it'll also quicken your mortal body of his grace he said to, uh, to Paul there uh, when Paul asked him to remove that thorn from his flesh uh, he said my grace is sufficient for thee it'll always be ahead of us it'll always be out here in front of us that we won't, uh, we won't have to uh, uh, wonder if God's going to uh, bless us or if God's going to move for us if he's going to keep on guiding us and leading us we're following uh, his grace uh, God has his good grace out there that'll cause us to be made perfect uh, in all of our weakness. He'll fulfill that uh, that we need. And there will always be that ample provision that God will provide for us as we uh, look ahead in this life. We know that we have a shepherd uh, that's leading us, that's guiding us. Uh, and we can say as David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Scripture says in Psalm 34, O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want for any good thing. The psalmist said, I, I have been young and now I am old, but I have never saw his seed forsaken or his children forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God will always provide. You can rest assured the shells may be empty in the grocery stores one day but God will provide for his children. He fed the children of Israel with manna that they didn't know what it was. Uh, they said what is it? Uh, amen. Uh, and that, that may be the way it has to be for us but God will certainly take care of his own. And we're looking ahead. We're looking ahead. This world is not our home. We don't know when the Lord will uh, return for us. It may be uh, before we get out of here. It may be next week or next month. We don't know the day uh, nor the hour, but we do know his coming is near. James said that we know that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. That means it could happen any moment. It could happen uh, any day. 
And so God gives us, uh, you know, courage to look ahead, to see all the things that are going on in this world today, all the trouble, all the, the battles and, and war and, and fightings and corruption and, uh, you know, drugs and all this stuff that, that's so, so bad and, and all the killings and murders and abortions and everything else that goes with it. It's a sad day. It's a dark day in this world uh, that we're living in. In. But we have a, a certainty uh, for us that Jesus Christ is coming back uh, to this earth again. Uh, he's coming uh, to reward you and I. He's coming to give us uh, those things that we have been longing for. Amen. And there is God coming that day that the Lord will come again. And then he'll uh, welcome us home. Uh, uh, the rapture will take place. Uh, amen. The dead in Christ will rise uh, and those that remain and are alive will be called up together uh, in the air to, and, and uh, will forever be with the Lord. Uh, amen. What a day that's going to be. That's what's ahead for us. Uh, amen hear of the Lord say you've been faithful over a few things I'm going to make you ruler over many things enter now into the joy uh, of the Lord so Paul said here he had not already attained he had not already received all of the benefits that were awaiting him and what awaits us uh, is that glorification that God will glorify us Amen. No wakes, no pains. Amen. I, I sit for a few minutes. I get up. I can't hardly go. I got to wind it up to get it going. Amen. Praise the Lord. But this, that he said, these benefits that he's not attained to yet, but he's going to attain to them. He's going to receive that glorification. He's going to be uh, receiving that glorified body where there will uh, be a freedom, a freedom from the presence of sin, a freedom from the presence of sickness, a freedom from the presence of evil and all of that. And he has this goal in mind that this salvation uh, he is looking at is in its fullness. This is the prize uh, that he's looking for. So just look what's waiting for us uh, this morning. Just look what's ahead. There's joy. There's gladness that are ahead for every child of God, every believer. And Jeff's going to come and sing for us. Look what lies ahead. I didn't steal that title from that song. I thought about the song after I, I thought about the message. So if they want to get me for plagiarism, let them go ahead. Amen. I get so sick and tired of seeing on Facebook where somebody uh, is plagiarizing somebody's sermon. I thought, my God, they sing everybody else's song. What's the difference? Amen. Ask one preacher, say, where do you get your sermons? He said, I get them wherever I can. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. If you're here and need prayer for anything this morning, we invite you to come and, and uh, seek the Lord and just sing this great song. Just look what lies ahead. Amen. This road I'm on is straight and narrow, but it leads to a better home. It was laid by Christ one day at Calvary while he suffered all alone. This road may lead over many high mountains, valleys, at home with Jesus where tears will never be shed. Though often this road gets rough and rocky, still I know what lies ahead. While on this road I get so weary and often my feet weary so ahead. There's peace and contentment, everybody will be happy and whole. I'll be 
At home with Jesus where tears will never be shed. Though often this road gets rough and rocky, still I know what lies ahead. Though often this road gets rough and rocky,